Welcome to the um, March 16th Select Board and Board of Health meeting, um, joint meeting with the Finance Committee. We're opening up a little bit earlier so we can hear from Barbara um, and Trevor. So would you like to read the first sure. part? Sure. Yep. yep. We'll open the meeting at 445. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Remote meeting connections are listed on our agenda, which you can find by going to the Deerfield Town website or on the bottom right by the calendar, you'll see upcoming meetings, you'll see this meeting, and following that, you'll see a a link to the Finance Committee meeting starting at 5. Um, there you can uh, lick, click on the link for the Zoom uh, to get onto the meeting as a Zoom. If you want to dial in, the number is 312-626-6799. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Should you need the passcode, it's 570012. And we are... Um, Oh, see, so meetings attendees should mute their phones by uh, hitting star six for landlines. Unless you're asking a question or commenting, all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. And uh, welcome to the meeting. We're welcoming um, our town clerk, treasurer, um, tax collector, um, Barbara Hancock, here to talk about upcoming election and some other loans whatever else yeah. whatever else we well, have. we'll save the loans for the budget talk <laughs> oh, okay great Sounds yeah. good. well welcome i just wanted to um, go over the plan and make sure that we're all on board with the same plan <laughs> sure before i before i roll it out yep um but we um are going to carry on with the uh annual town election on the regular scheduled day that normally would happen instead of postponing so that will be the first Monday in May, which is the third. Okay. Um, polls will open at 10 a.m. as normal yep. uh, to 8 p.m. Um, and just for added drama, an hour ago, <laughs> <laughs> I found out that we can do uh, early voting by mail like we did last year. Oh, great. Um, so I think it worked out well, and I was going to go with the same kind of mailbox thing so yep. everyone will recognize it and we'll put the um the application for the mail-in ballot on the back great so these are actually already out in the foyer um on top of the drop box perfect so we you can apply for them anytime but we're not going to have the ballots until probably april 10th ish or so so but we can accept your um, mail-in ballot applications and as soon as we get the ballots then we could mail them and then they can be dropped off in the drop box or put through the mail either one that was similar to last time too where we got it early and everyone said where's my ballot we had to wait and get them printed and yeah. they'll get to you in time yes yeah. and i plan on kind of laying everything out just like we did last year um it's early may hopefully i can have the doors open yep. we'll proceed with the social distancing all of the just like last year. It'll look just like last year. Did a great um, job last year. I do want to say that these are going to be out in the foyer and also mail in uh, voting applications if you're not already a voter. Mm -hmm. um, they look kind of similar. Just I'm um, putting the, the mailbox on the back of the early voting ballot application and on the back of the voting registration is, is the return address to us. So they're right. both going to be out there. They look a little similar, but... Mm -hmm. Hopefully the mailbox will be a tip off. Yep. Yeah. Um, the and yeah. early like how when's the last date to register to vote? Register to vote is uh, Tuesday, April thirteenth. Okay. Yeah, you can go online. Um, we've got links on our website. Um, any questions about voting? We have a lot of information. You do on the website on the town clerk page. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday was the last day. Um, to hand in nomination papers, so we have our slate of officers ready to go. I have a board of registrars meeting Thursday, so once they come in, I'll post the, the slate of officers that are running the seats uh, on the website, and I'll put it out in the foyer. Great. I'll have the warrant ready for you guys 
Okay. And the March decide yep. to post that. Perfect. So, uh, what did I want to tell you? Same contingency plan. I, I wanted to introduce these <laughs> fancy looking suitcases here. Yeah. And I expect to use these at the um, annual town election. We, we've got to be trained, but we got a grant um, from the Center of Tax and Civic Life. They were very generous, and we ended up getting pull pads, which a lot of other cities and towns have, Great. but we can use them to check people in. We can look up voters and uh, and we'll use them at town meeting. So okay. I wanted you to see them. Yeah, <laughs> like a regular iPad. And so that, yeah, so we can have um, create reports and do a lot more than we can with our current paper books. Right. Um, I think we still do the paper books as a backup, but right. anyway. That's good. Woohoo! That's exciting. Yeah, that's really great. <laughs> it's very Wonderful exciting, to yeah. To do I that. think that'll work out a lot better outside yes. at the town meeting and than the, blow, than the, the book blowing. <laughs> yes, for um, sure. Barbara, that's yeah. actually, that is really good because it will be better outside. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's yeah. pouring yeah. rain. Unless it's pouring well, rain. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that won't be good for paper or that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if anyone has any questions about elections. I think um, we certainly had a, a lot of <laughs> elections last year, so I think we're yeah. all kind of familiar with what it's going to look like. Pretty trained as to what. Yeah. And, and I think all the feedback was really positive yeah. last yeah. year. It worked I think, well. Uh, People got surprisingly, used. you know, for the space that we have, it. I know it was a lot of work for you and your right. staff, all the mailings and the right. mailing right. out. And right. I know you guys worked hard yeah, for that. Yeah, I really don't expect the numbers that we saw, you know, right. in the fall, but for yep. a local election, um, sure. there, there's not uh, many seats contested. There's, you know, some a race for the planning board seats, but other than mm -hmm. that, um, but we do have someone running in every seat, which is great. Yes. Yeah. Um, I thought I'd take this So, Barbara, I just want to verify. Barbara, I just want to yeah. verify. We have uh, someone running in every seat, right? There are no. Yeah. Okay. Right. Good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's somebody running for everything. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to mention, since I have <laughs> the airspace, um, that Monday, uh, Friday, all the motor vehicle excise bills are due. Um, next week, we're going to send out real estate. Um, I would say by the end of next week. Um, those are due May 3rd, big day. Okay. Um, dogs also should be licensed by the end of April. Um, I think we're going to put ourselves back on track for transfer station stickers, mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Yeah, I don't I think know. So. Um, so those would be May. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and people can still just sign up online for any of that stuff, dog stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we haven't released the transportation stickers. I'm right. sure you're going to have a meeting and, yeah. and and review the pricing and all that stuff, and yeah. people's got to get the stickers. But last year, we had postponed that till August, uh, just as we tried to get our feet under us with all the yeah. other stuff going on. But um, yeah. I think it'd be great if we could get that back on schedule yep. for get our receipts kind of Absolutely. more realistic to the fiscal year. Yeah, they were out of balance yeah. last year. Yeah, I will say collections has been great. Real yep. estate, people are paying their Good. You know, very, very, very few uh, balances on last year at all. Great. So. Good work. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any questions anybody has? All set. I right. probably should say that it's okay to put the ballots in the Dropbox. I don't know if I said that. Oh. Definitely okay. put them in the Dropbox. The Dropbox is only emptied by my office. That's the only people that open that box. Yeah. So uh, real estate bills, any correspondence, ballots can all go in there. Yep. Great. Yeah. It's worked out really well. Yeah. It's, it's open 24 seven. Yep. Um, the police station can see it. Yep. So, um, camera. Yeah. It's really great. Yep. It's very good. Yep. Any questions from the audience? Okay. <laughs> well, that thank was you easy. so much. <laughs> it's so good to see you and thank you for all your yeah. work. Yeah, I know. It's like catch it all up, right? Yep. Absolutely. Great. And then you're gonna are you gonna hang out a bit for the finance committee? For yeah, school yeah. Stuff? I'm not okay. first uh, finance, I believe. Great. So. Sounds good. Yeah. Oh, Any Barbara, other business? actually, I had a question from someone. Um, they wanted yeah. to know if if they have property in town but actually don't live in town, can they be on town boards? And you know, I only know. I don't believe so. 
Okay, because right. I, I only knew a skip who lives out, you know, I mean, he still has his house he's working on, but he lives in Greenfield and I mean, yeah, I, I think um, normally uh, boards and committees are made up of, of voting members of town. So I, I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah, there would be an exception at all to that. Right. They'd have to be a voting member in town. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Any other business before the board, the select board? Casey, is there anything we want to hit on before the finance committee? It's only a four minutes, but. Not at this point. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any updates right. that anyone wants to talk about? Uh, Trevor, did you have any updates or Dave? Um, well, um, let's see. I mean, I can hit on it a little later on, but we had, you know, we had um, a good meeting for the town common committee and uh, we're, we kind of approved them to kind of finish up the plan and the design and the budget. So we should see that pretty quick and really love to get moving on that master, not master plan, but you know what I mean? A, a, uh, an idea of grouping us all together, all of our projects together under one kind of design per se, but no, I think everything else has been going well. Vaccines have been hectic as usual and crazy and a mess, um, but we're, we're getting quite a few people signed up. So still have a lot more to go and it's been a rocky road it's been awful. So did, did the vaccines keep, keep come talking. in today? Yes, the vaccines came in yeah. or to, for this week. Okay. So we have, yep. um, you know, the Johnson and Johnson for Wednesday and Saturday. And then um, we, you know, we won't know Friday if we have the doses for next week's second dose clinic. I'm assuming right. you know, because it's a priority second dose, um, we will, should get it. Pretty, but yeah, pretty confident. I, but know, I know they've had to extra, move it. Right. I don't know how many extra we're going to get, you know, that would be new doses. So right. we'll have to see. Right. I mean, I, I think it's know. just kind of updating the ones we have. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, fin we'll finish off our, at least the, the 501 that we were done last yep. month. But and we'll get some more done this week. Right. And yep. it would be nice. It would either be nice to have more vaccine um, to do start more for first shots or do the Johnson and Johnson. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, the British, the UK variant the B117 variant is becoming so common now in Massachusetts that pretty soon it's not going to be um, reported. But the okay. uh, South African variant and the Brazilian one that we're actually really concerned about um, seems to be not really catching. It's, there's basically pretty rare. There's only two in um, Hampshire County and like there's a cluster of like 40 in Worcester County, and that's the closest ones to us. So um, I hope it continues to be not um, as easily, you know, not as prevalent um, like the UK variant. The UK variant is it make is more infectious, but it is doesn't it's is the same the same mild or it can be bad conditions, but there's no difference in, in what the impact is on people. And so right. um, whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. But the, um, the Brazilian one can reinfect and that's the one we're really concerned about and it seems to be not thriving, which is really good news. Yeah, so um, we just gotta keep vaccinating people. People have to be paying attention. Our numbers are very good. We are, all our numbers are attributed to a couple of households and um, you know, that was work related and it, and um, and actually one that we're not really sure it came from, but um, they are very stubborn though, because yes. every day or every other low day we're level. still being very right. stubborn to like it's low, but there's they're still there. Yeah, so, it's low right. level, but it's not going away. So even if you get nope. the vaccine, you have to wear a mask and you have to really pay attention still with social distancing and trying to um, you know. Uh, maintain your household pods and stuff. Mm -hmm. we just we, so we can get we just make it for a couple in. more months. I think I think with the good weather and everybody getting outside that we'll be okay. Yep. Okay. 
so we invite the finance committee to open up. Um, Hi there. Sorry, I was badly putting my um, my new budgets in my book. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I know this is what I was doing too. <laughs> Listen to you talk about vaccines. All right, so we have it's like Jim, Jeff, John. Um, somebody's called in. Is that one of our finance committee people? Uh, that's the town. Uh, that's the town pod here oh, that's on the you. table. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. The five three five five uh, three five one is the town number. The Allison. So we're missing Skip and Jack. Huh? I was talking to Skip yesterday. I know he intends to come. Yep. I know Brenda. I was in Brenda's office when he was calling. So I I don't know. I'm yeah. pretty sure he's going to come. I think so. He is planning to be on. All right. Okay. Well, I guess it's um, 5.01 p.m. So let's open the finance committee meeting for March 16th, 2021. Um, we have an agenda to go through and a set of budgets. Um, Brenda, do you have any introductory remarks that you'd like to make? Can we start with the minutes? Oh, yes, yes, sure. Um, the only change um, was I left Bob Walden off the attendance. Um, I don't know if anybody else noticed any changes. I did not. So do we have a motion to approve the minutes? <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting. Jeff, do we have a second? Second. Any minutes? So it's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes from the previous meeting with the change that we add. Oh gosh, Bob. Bob Walden. Walden, thank you. Um, yep. To the to the attendance. Any further discussion? No. Okay. Um, I haven't written down my names for our round robin. Jeff Upton. Yes. John Poreski. Uh, yes. Uh, Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, zero, zero. Thank you. All right. Um, so we've gotten through the minutes. Um, now, Brenda, do you have any <laughs> comments? <laughs> well, we do have uh, quite a few budgets to go through tonight. Um, the first set of budgets are the clerk treasurer collector budgets and uh, the various budgets associated with that position. Uh, Barbara is in the main room with Trevor there. Um, okay. Okay, so um, we might as well start with, uh, with the first one on the list, which is the clerk treasurer collector salaries. And that's account 145-5110. Oh. <laughs> And the dollar amount of that is 190746 So all of you should have that budget in front of you. Um, there really isn't anything to talk about here. Um, they're all step increases. Uh, right now, there's no COLA uh, set by the personnel board or the select board. So um, it's just a step increase for each one of them. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion, Jeff. Jeff, making a motion to uh, recommend the 145 5110 account 
for one hundred ninety thousand seven hundred and forty six dollars. It's uh, obviously that's that's the pay scale uh, that we're just conforming to. So there's not much room for any discussion there. Great. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. So despite there not being room for discussion, anybody have any comments? <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. Oh, shoot, I closed my book with my list of people. Um, all right, I don't hear any discussion. I don't see Skip yet. So Jeff Upton. Aye. John Poreski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. All right, so that's five zero zero. Next. The next one on the list is the treasurer collector expense account, and that is 145-5410. Total amount of that is $31,110. Um, that one actually went down um, because we have the actuarial done once every other year, and this is an off year. Take all the help we can get. Yep. All right, do we have a, yeah, Jim? I do have a question. Um, what is the, there's just a big general expense line. Um, mm -hmm. It's not really broken out any. How much of that is collector salary or, or um, um, I mean, what does that go for? Far yeah. Um, well, we just passed the salaries, so that's a separate budget. So there's no okay. salaries in here. Um, yes. But I do do um, a detail for each of my budgets. So what's, what's in that um, budget are expenses like um, paying the Harper's payroll service um, postage, which is probably about the thing that's uh, <laughs> risen the most in this past year in light of COVID because we have to mail everything. We mail every single paycheck. Um, so the postage is really, really um, risen. I left the budget uh, flat with no increase because um, we've lost the opportunity to go to conferences and that kind of thing. So I kind of, I mean, I don't think this is a year to start, you know, wigwagging back and forth about amount. So I think we'll have less conferences. We'll have a whole lot more postage. Um, we also um, pay for the uh, postage machine in my office. There's a lease on that. I have to buy all the forms for taxes and the envelopes and all that kind of stuff. Um, we also have maybe an increase in banking costs. So when we do a borrowing, we have uh, Unibank uh, do our continual reporting to, to DLS and DOR or whatever they need to do. And there's a fee for each time we do that. So as we do more loans, um, the potential for a little more increase there. So um, any postings in the newspaper, if I do test taking, have to go in the newspaper. Um, so those are kind of some of the major things that make up this budget. Um, so as I said, some things I think kind of really exploded. <laughs> and then there was other things we couldn't do. So I just left it. Okay, thanks. Go ahead, John. Uh, the Brenda, the financial statement for January uh, for 2021 shows appropriations of 37,110. Um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, but yeah. what was it? But the financial statement, I'm sorry. The budget sheet shows, shows 37,110. The appropriations in your financial statement shows 41,585. So the, so the difference, John, is uh, there's a, uh, Barb has the opportunity on the tax recap to add some money that she can use towards tax taking. And so um, in the past few years, she has taken the opportunity to do that. So that's why the difference in that uh, line. 
right, there's 3,000 on the, on the recap for tax taking. And that, that's another thing that I want to mention in this budget, and I hope it doesn't, I, I've never done it before, but um, I did some land or low value takings in 19, and those properties have to go to auction uh, within two years. So I'm sure there's going to be some sort of uh, fees associated with, with auctioning those properties. Um, and that would come out of this budget as well. So um, I might use that 3000 to cover that expense. Lawyers fees and whatever to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. I will say that um, I've been doing these budgets now since 13. Um, and I, I kind of have a rhythm and, and, and um, a forum that I do. And, and I feel like it's, it's been pretty close to what we spend and appropriate, so I didn't want to make any major changes. Yep. Which is pretty much consistent with the rest of my budget. So we don't have a motion yet for this um, item. I'll make a motion for uh, the treasurer collector expense uh, account number 145-5410 for a total of $31,110. Second. All right. Any further discussion? No. Okay. Um, let's do our roll call. Vote, vote, Jeff Upton. Aye. John Poreski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. John Pachurik. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. All right, so that's six zero zero passes. Oh, this skip. Yep, I skip. Oh, okay, so the next budget is the town clerk expense budget, and that is 161-5400. The total dollar amount of that is $17,598. Um, Skip, there's a ton of noise, I think, and it's in the background of yours. Would you mind muting? while you're not talking and then unmute whenever you talk. Sure, hang on just a second. Let me get to the page here, okay, which may, it may be my turning to the paper or someplace. So is there still noise? Plenty of it. Yeah, kind of. Better. I'm not. All right. Um, we don't have we don't have a motion yet, right? Correct. Anyone like to make a motion on this one? I'll make a motion to approve town clerk expense one sixty one fifty four hundred for seventeen thousand five hundred ninety eight dollars. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for town clerk expense. Um, I'll start off with a question. So it's gone down a bunch. What's the change? Yep, um, this one is the one that, that changes uh, the most. Um, and Jim, thank you for pointing out. I'll just briefly tell you what um, this budget uh, covers. It covers um, the cost of street listings, um, that we have done the postage for that um, census you all get every year. Um, it covers uh, dog tags and postage. I'm going to keep saying postage because postage has been a thing. Um, uh, we all have to be bonded. We pay for our bonds out of there. Uh, any bylaw changes, we have to pay the maintenance costs for the bylaw general code and then. If I have to change the code and change a bylaw or anything like that, um, that, that is a cost. 
Um, and I expect that I'm going to be doing that <laughs> this year, probably a bit. Um, we, we find all our vital records um, and expenses associated with that. And then I left, uh, lastly, elections. Um, so that makes up probably the greater portion of this budget. So when, um, within this fiscal year, there really isn't any major elections outside of the annual town election. So you kind of see this one go up and down because, um, because of the election year. I will say it's more expensive to run the, um, well, in a way, it's, it can be more expensive to run the annual town election because we have to pay for all the programming ourselves of the um, cards in the voter uh, ballot boxes. When it's a state election, they pay for it. So, you know, I have to have more vote, uh, help voting, though, at right. those. So, I don't know. Uh, so that's why it goes down on the years when we don't have a fall election. Sorry, I was muted. Um, any other discussion or questions? Anybody? Doesn't sound like it. Yeah. All right. Um, roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. John Paturk. Aye. Skip Olmstead. <laughs> <He's missing. laughs> yeah, he is. All right, we'll skip, skip. Um, Allison Vandervelde. Hi. All right, so that's a six zero zero. They just called you. They missed something. Hey, Skip, do you want to vote on the um, town clerk expense? Yes, I'll vote on. Okay, so that's a seven zero zero. All right, Linda. So now we'll jump to your tab five, and we're going to go to the veteran district assessment, and that's 543-5400. Total of, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, veterans benefits, 543-5410. And for $21,000. Make a motion we approve this budget. Second. Can I just hear one more time what budget you're talking about? Five, four, veterans three, benefits. Four, ten okay. for veterans benefits. All right, and that was um, was that Jack and Jeff? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? I believe this is the one that gives back uh, whatever we spend on veterans benefits. We get back 75% from the state the following year. Is that still correct? That is correct. That is correct. Um, right. John? I could never be a dentist. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they use a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it's all backwards. Um, what does it get spent on? Not, I mean, I'm, but if we get reimbursed 75%, maybe we should spend more. Well, this is um, for um, veterans that are eligible for benefits. If they live in town, then we, we are billed for the benefits. And then we get them back um, monthly, actually. So, it's, so if we have veterans, I mean, this could, this could vary if, if a couple more veterans that were eligible suddenly moved into town. Um, this has been pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. um, it, it went down a little bit um, a couple of years ago, but it's based on how many eligible veterans live in our town. Is it for stuff like the discount on the, um, I don't know what. It's transition money <laughs> for... Julie, it's transition money for um, like housing or food or, okay. you know, it's a, it's a safety net kind of thing. And we're um, part of the regional. Yeah. Right. It, for a while thereafter, every time we have, you know, there has been some Iraqi 
you, you know, when we did the Iraqi war and stuff like that, it went really very high and the re reimbursement was very slow. But otherwise, it's been fairly stable. Okay. Jim? Just to clarify, this amount is the entire amount, not the 25% after reimbursement, correct? Right. This is the entire amount. This is our expense. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Doesn't look like it. All right, roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Kim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. Jack Paturk. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Muted. Yeah. Uh, Allison Vandervelden. Aye. All right, so that carries seven zero zero. All right. We'll Next. move on to tab seven, and we're going to look at maturing debt, 710-5900. That one of the ones that was in our envelope? Yes, that's correct. And the, and the total of that is $483,614. Make a motion we approve this. Before we approve it, would you explain the debt? Sure. Do you have a second uh, on it or before we start discussion? Just so we don't second it. You want a second? Oh. Okay, now let's discuss. <laughs> so the um, the garage loan is a bond, so we have um, our debt schedule and we've been paying that. So the 245 is our scheduled payment. Um, the roof, the school roof, we've been paying down um, a hundred thousand dollars plus what other whatever other um, uh, contributions have been made. They vary throughout um, yep. the year. Uh, I think it was only twenty thousand or something Brenda, this year. Or, yeah, I think twenty five thousand this year. But yeah, okay. So uh, whatever our balance is, we take out 125,000, and that's how much we would um, go out to bid again for. Uh, that's a ban, and I think uh, we're at 426,000. Um, the NENB, that's we repurchased the New England Natural Bakers property um, about a year ago or so. So um, we're just going to, we didn't pay anything down on that. We're just going to roll it over and hopefully we're going to sell that property yep. at some point. Yep. Um, so there's no pay down on that loan. And I, I guess I just wanted to kind of speak to that a little bit because I think the last time we all met, you know, we kind of talked about doing an RFP for the property and we were a little bit nervous. Jeff and I had talked a little bit too about putting it out on the market right now. We weren't sure how the commercial market was going to be. Um, there is there is some interest in that property. So uh, we were really hoping maybe to, um, and I talked to a couple of uh, people and, and they felt that, the, that land in our area, actually specifically our town, is very sought after at the moment. So um, we felt like we should go out for an appraisal and, and do an RFP for the property. So. In the last meeting, a couple, couple months ago or a month ago, we talked about holding, but um, we have some really good interest on, a, uh, on uh, a good possibility to bring some jobs to the town. So we'd like to kind of move forward with it with an appraisal this year, you know, fairly shortly, and then do an RFP on it. I'll uh, step up. I, I will agree with Trevor. There's been definitely an uptick in the market especially in this area. So now may be a good time to uh, test the waters. So I, yeah. I do agree with you, Trevor. On this. Thank you. So we plan just to take that up for another year and hopefully have some yeah. action in between then. <laughs> yep. Um, I don't know if that answered everybody's questions, but the other um, the other debt is for the million dollar clarifier that, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kresge. <laughs> Did no, I move on too soon, John? I have a question about the clarifier. 
Um, oh, okay. Perfect. So the clarifier, I was going to say the amount I have in there is the town uh, 25 to 10 portion of the amount owed on that. Okay. So the rest will be coming from um, so the total is actually four times that. Yes. So, mm -hmm. yes. Can I ask a question? The the one thirty eight is the principal repayment, and that's the total repayment. Once once that payment's made, the clarifier yeah, yeah. would pay for. Right. Okay. The other amount with commodity enterprise. Uh, Brenda can speak yeah. to. Right. So. Um, the total cost of the clarifier was 754000 and we paid down 200000 this fiscal year. So then in fiscal year 22, we are able to pay off the whole rest of that. Um, and you will see that when we go through the wastewater treatment plant budget, you'll see the debt service for the, for the remaining amount. Right. And then the last item we yeah. Right. So with phase one, we, we aren't paying anything down at this point in time. Uh, it'll just be an interest payment. And you'll see that when we get to the interest uh, on maturing debt. So the principal due, why does it say 852,000 plus 66? What's the plus 66? Well, we had, um, uh, did, uh, Brenda, did they have the um, schedule of, of payment? When we, when we, I can't look up with my glasses on. When, um, when we sat with the um, engineer for the project, for the big wastewater treatment project, not the clarifier, um, they spelled out uh, what they expected the cost to be. So then we came up with a, um, a, a borrowing schedule, if you will. So the first borrowing was 852,000. Um, we're gonna borrow again for another year till next June, and we're gonna borrow 7,462,000. So still a little new to us that we're staying on, on the budgeting on the borrowing schedule. All right. Anybody else have any questions on any of these items? Oh. Nope. All right. Sounds like we're ready for a vote. Um, Jeff Upton. Aye. Don Pereski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julia Chalfant. Aye. Jack Paturic. Aye. Skip Olmsted. Aye. Allison Vanderbelden. Aye. All right, seven zero zero. So the next, What's next? Budget, the next budget is, is the page after that. It's budget seven fifty one dash fifty nine hundred, and that's interest on the maturing debt. And the total of that is one hundred and thirty nine thousand three hundred and fifty. Make a motion. We approve this budget. I'll second it. Great. Uh, go ahead, John. I presume the 19 million wastewater treatment plant, the 23,000 uh, interest on the 19 million is just the town's 25% share? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And if I could, I just want to clarify that $23,000 is the entire interest payment, uh, or at least the town's share of the entire interest payment for all of 2022. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions on any of these items? Oh. Nope. Alrighty. 
see any hands. Uh, roll call vote, Jeff Upton. Aye. Juan Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Eula Chalfin, aye. Jack Petura. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. All right, that's seven zero zero carries. All right, so the next budget is uh, the next page, 752-5900, and that's interest on temporary loans for $5,000. I move. I'll second it. All right, we have it moved and seconded. Um, can you just recap what this is for, Barb? Yep. This is a small budget um, in the past. I mean, there was a, a time or two that we borrowed um, when the tax bill didn't quite go out in time, or if we have to pay a big, um, someone gets a big abatement or something like that, we might have to pay interest back to the person. So it's a small pool of money um, that, that covers sometimes a liability that we might have with regard to interest. Any... Questions or discussions? Nope. I don't see any. Jeff Upton. Aye. Don Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julia Chalfin. Aye. Jim Turk. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Carrie 700. All right, so the next budget that you have are in tab eight. And the first one is 9-11-5400. And that's the um, Franklin County retirement for $563,504. So moved. Mm -hmm. We have a second? So can I? Second. All right, moved and seconded for Franklin County Regional Retirement. Questions? Why is, why is a number nine in number eight? Like a 900 number. Why is it in number eight and not in number Because that's where you put it. That's where it got put. Look, look at your um, index. I know, but I had to put it in nine to give it straight. Oh. <laughs> Well, you can do that if you want. I just, I was trying to fit everything in and there's only one number. I so. Oh, I got this. There's only one, one item in this, this I got yeah. this. Okay. <laughs> this budget um, is actually invoiced to us from um, the retirement board. Uh, we do pay it all up front to um, in July to appreciate a discount, but um, this comes as an invoice to us, really. Barbara, what's the percentage that we're being charged? <clears throat> Almost 23%, 22.59 is the assessment rate. Would you would you quickly explain that so that everybody understands what that what that twenty two percent is? Sure. So um, the retirement board um, handles uh, the employees' retirement, except for those part timers or people that are covered under Massachusetts retirement. And so employees contribute out of their paycheck, and the town pays an assessment. So the twenty two point nine five is a is a formula used on the um, payroll dollar uh, without overtime. So. so is this the one that's expected to drop after some period or is this a pretty steady state? Yeah, they are, they're hoping to be fully funded, I think in uh, 2032 or 33 or something like that. Yes. Oh, so it's not your time soon. Any other discussion? Go ahead, John. Um, I'm looking at the sewer enterprise fund financials yep. at the forty one thousand oh seventy eight. 
look in the salaries page of your wastewater. Is it buried in the salaries number? It's it's in the salaries section. I shouldn't say buried. I don't mean that. It's included. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I have the question. I don't see it. Um, build directly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we do build directly the uh, wastewater treatment plant, um, the senior center, and and the EMA. So they have their portion in their own budget. So I figure out the whole amount and then out there. So that will go up tomorrow. So this one twenty four nine fifty. Oh, that's scams. That's why wastewater treatment forty one yeah. or something. Yeah, and that would be in yeah. there. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't see any. Jeff Upton. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. John Pichert. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. That carries 700. Boy, we're just an agreeable bunch. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it speaks to um, the fact that Barb does her homework very well. Well said. Yes. Oh, thank you, Brenda. <laughs> Um, the next budget is the very next page, 912-5400. That's workers' compensation. <laughs> and the total of that one is 37,144. So moved. Seconded. All right, it's been moved and seconded for workers' comp. Any questions? I'll ask what's causing it to drop it. year by year. Yeah. Um, we. We are signed up with, we switched our insurance um, company to Maya a handful of years ago. Um, and up until that point, I, I had a good formula going to figure out workers' comp. But um, in, in a good way, Maya keeps coming up with uh, participation credits and, and different, you know, you spend with them longer, you get more credits. So I keep lowering the budget trying to figure out where we belong. So uh, if you can. Last year, we didn't spend as much as I thought, and I had already dropped it. So, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm gauging it based on uh, to get there. But I do have a calculation based on um, salary and, and the rate that they use for workers' comp. So, this is my best. <laughs> Done. Got a question? Yes. Question I have is uh, offset for South County Senior Center. There's no number in there. Should there be? There's no way to um, out I, the senior center from the town. Sorry, Barb. That's okay. But there is, but you can do it for the wastewater treatment and the skims. Yeah. They get ends up being like 50 bucks or something. Yeah. <laughs> really small. Oh, because there's just small yet. So. Well, it's all administrative, so it's at the lowest rate. I know that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's very, very low. All right. Any further questions? Nope. Any? Um, Jeff Upton. Hi. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. John Pachurik. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. That carries 700. All right. So the next budget is unemployment insurance, and that is the next page, 913-5400. For twenty-seven thousand dollars. 
Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded for unemployment insurance. Um, I'll just throw a question out. It went up a lot last year and then is staying the yep. same. Um, what happened? Yes, well, um, anyone, we, we pay as we go, if you will. So if we have a claim, we pay. Um, Okay. This year, this has been a full-time job, honestly, keeping track of this unemployment. It honestly has. Um, we've had a, a tremendous amount of what seems like fraudulent claims. And so um, unemployment, finally, they do bill us every month. And I have many accounts on appeal um, and protesting. I'm hoping in the end um, that it doesn't affect us hugely, but it's really just a simple point on this one here. I don't know what it would be, but it's going to be something. Um, we have a lot of coming and going at the elementary school, so I know we are going to have claims for sure. Um, so there a lot more than this. Um, I was going to say state unemployment um, ended up extending the due date of all of our invoices to the end of June. So um, I don't even know exactly where we are right now. The, uh, the fluctuation is, is something that no one can follow. <laughs> so at the end of June, I'll have a good idea of how we ended up coming out this year. But until then, um, this is my best guess. <laughs> Any other questions, anybody? No. Nope. Doesn't look like it. All right, Jeff Upton. Question. Hi. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. We have a question. Go ahead, John. Brenda, I asked this before, and if you want to do it on a phone call so we don't tie up everybody's time, I don't understand why there's a carry forward for this account or some of the others like this, where it was voted in the general audit of this budget for $27,000. Why is this account and others similar to this? Why do they have a carry forward? Why do some have a carry forward and some don't? Well, this this specific account had a carry forward at the end of this fiscal year because of that very thing, because of of the claims that we were expecting due to the um, the layoffs that the school did uh, because of COVID nineteen. I, I don't know that they did layoffs, but there were people that they didn't bring back and so on and so forth. So we had no idea of what our claims were going to be for March through June because the state hadn't figured that out yet. So that's why we encumbered those funds at the beginning of this year. Who makes the decision to do that? I... You do? Okay. Kind of, I, Usually the department... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Barb. Well, um, because uh, the, um, COVID, COVID came in, in March, by April, May, June, we were having um, a lot of claims. We did not have the bills yet, and we didn't have a decision from unemployment. And so I knew that we were going to have a liability that went into the next fiscal year from the prior fiscal year. So. Um, the request would be to set aside those funds for that bill that I, I know is coming. So that's Does 20, that uh, Yeah, no, I get why you're doing it. I'm just wondering what the offset to that is. Um, I guess that's 20000 that doesn't go into free cash? That's correct. Okay. Well... Thank you. What did we spend in, Brenda? It was a lot. It was in the teens, 14000 or something? Yeah, I wanted to be higher than that in the end. I know. It, it, it was a uh, mid teens, uh, 15000 or we, we, we had to send in close to that. To the state. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a copy of it. I don't even have the encumbered here, but. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Nope. Doesn't look like it. it. Was, All right. Just so you know, it was actually it was actually seventeen thousand three hundred. That was our liability for fiscal twenty. That that uh, we spent at uh, out of that encumbered money. 
Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right, Jeff Upton. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Gambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. Jack Paturk. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. That carries seven zero zero. All right, the very next budget is the next page, and that's the group insurance for the town. And that's account number 914-5400 for $292,280. I moved. Mm -hmm. I'll second. second it. Okay, so moved and seconded for group insurance. Barb, you want to do a quick recap? Um, sure. So, um, the group insurance, we, um, a number of years ago, split it um, between the town and the school, and I checked um, how many, um, you know, HMO, single family, how many PPO, so I checked the whole thing, and how many people are enrolled, and whether they're at the town or the school. Uh, and so then we typically, um, I usually count in a little bit of an increase for the premium for the year, and then I usually put in a little bit more because we tend to grow for some reason. There's, the school grows or we get into employees. So those are the kind of wiggle room things, but the rest of it is the solid numbers from the year before. So as I'm putting my budget together, I look at December of the prior year to see who we have enrolled in what plan, how much that all adds up to divide the town and the school, do a little uh, percentage increase for anticipated premium increases, and then a little bit more for uh, for someone coming on that might not be on now. Um, good news, uh, I did go back and alter this um, budget because we found out that they are not increasing the premium on our, our plans this year. Um, some of them quietly are going down. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I was able to adjust that uh, and keep it from rising the way it wants to rise, which is a, a growing budget along with, you know, retirement. And um, this, is, this is a big one. So, it, so it's down <laughs> because the rates are down. Great. Any questions? Nope. Not see any. Jeff Upton. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. John Paturk. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. All right. That carries seven zero zero. All right, we have two left. Um, the next one is the very next page, and that is uh, the group insurance for the school. And that's 914-5410 for $657,526. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? Doesn't look like it. Jeff Upton. Aye. Don Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. John Paturk. Aye. Kip Olmstead. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. 700 carries. All right. So the last one is the next page, and that's Medicare. And that is 916-5400. And the total of that one is $103,987. Moved. Moved. Jeff, John beat you to it. Do you want a second? Pardon? Which one are they on? Which one are they on? Um, John. No, 
You'll second it. All right. We have a motion and a second for Medicare insurance. Any discussion? I you see. want me to say a little thing, Julie? Sure. Yeah. Go for it. This is the town. This is the town's Medicare expenses based on um, payroll dollars um, at a rate of 1.45%. Um, and so I just figure everybody, all the departments, payroll and do the calculation. Uh, expect a little growth in payroll and come up with this number. And then again, we charge out to. Uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, uh, STEM uh, doesn't have a withdrawal fee because I actually do their payroll separately, so they pay their own Medicare. I don't have to take it out of here. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? No. All right. Jeff Upton. Uh, aye. Don Poreski. Aye. Jim Campius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. John Paterik. Aye. Kip Olmsted. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. That carries 700. <laughs> so, Brenda, you said that was the last one for Barb? It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, who does the OPEP? I make that calculation. You do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what tab should that be filed in? I file that in 11, which is for the special article. Vicki <laughs> asked about OPEP. Did we ask about OPEP? Yeah, I didn't hear what Julie asked about. Yeah, she, yeah, she asked about OPEP. Yeah. No, Let's so I was about OPEB. Would you like to talk about OPEB, Barb? We'd love to talk about OPEB. Well, you know, um, I think it's been what four or five years that we, or four years. At least three or four, yeah. Yeah. So we have kind of taken a very conservative approach to, of um, computing our four percent of the health insurance because it was close to the amount that we were. Funding uh, when we did it the first year, and then it at least allowed for a bit of growth. But we might at some point want to up that, it's or maybe if we get new funds or up the percentage, just throw it out yeah. there. <laughs> I think I really think we should dedicate funds that, if mm -hmm. ever we get to the town, <laughs> you know, like marijuana or any other receipts that are kind of not. Um, you know, that, that aren't really budgeted on, that we really need to start adding to OPEB because um, we're just falling way behind. This is just going to bite us all. Um, well, not all of us will be here, but when it when it does, it's going to be a huge hit. The one thing that's also good about funding, you know, aside from the usual benefits of savings, um, is that it helps us when we get to our actuary done every other year. So as our picture looks better and better, our liability looks better, you know, less. Yes. <laughs> our, our liability improves. So not only are we helping ourselves, but we help our numbers with our again. Yeah. So something to think about. I know there's a lot going on now, but you know, we might want to think about keeping ourselves a little higher on that contribution. Mm -hmm. So while, uh, you're, while you're here, um, I'm going to ask a quick question. Go ahead, Jeff, and then I'll ask after. Um, have we ever talked about yeah, just council quick question as to oh, one one second, Jeff? All right, hang on a second, uh, John. You were... yeah. have we Jeff, ever talked Jeff about? Up. Okay, <laughs> is to okay. talk about bond council about what would happen if what would the interest rate on bonds be if we put in another hundred thousand what would the interest rates be if we didn't put in anything because right now i the way i see it we're just taking a shot in the dark at four percent we don't know really what the benefit or detriment of that percentage and we also have no plan as to when we're ever going to use the money so i, I think we need to know more and have a plan 
That's my opinion. Do we have a comment? Do we have a comment? Um, when we when we go out to bond, when we go out for a bid, um, we're trying to make a favorable picture. There, we we don't get to go out to bid and say, imagine our picture without this, or imagine our picture with more of this. So it's hard to answer that question. Anyone answer that question as to whether we would fare better on the market uh, with more, or would we fare less without it? Um, we're we're trying to. Um, create the best kind of portfolio look of ourselves when when we go out to bid for a loan. So I don't think there's a definitive answer. Well, that's, I, I guess I would say that that's one aspect of it. The other, the other aspect is just we're going to be in a world of hurt when we do have to start paying on this because we're never the delta is so great. We're never going to be able to catch up. Like now, it's like your 401k. You want to put money aside because you're going to need it later. You'll never catch up if you start doing your retirement at 45 or 50. And that's kind of where we're at. And we're, we're going to have this big liability down the road. I mean, some people don't think it is, but it truly is. I, I agree, John. I think we do need more info. And I maybe um, we could get our actuary or somebody to come in and do do another Refresher, we have new members on the board, a refresher and just a quick, you know, a fresh look at OPEB liability and what the benefits and, and negatives are. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Just so people really understand what, you know, the Mack truck that's coming. Jeff, you had a question? No, actually a comment. I, I was going to agree with John also. <laughs> Basically, I had a comment running those same lines that John had brought up. Uh, the other the other quick comment, though, uh, that's not OPEP related, but came up when we were discussing this, Trevor brought it up, was the marijuana money. And, and that, you know, obviously might not be a bad idea to earmark, but I also hope everybody remembers, but several years ago, Several years ago, when we decided to go with the school police officer, that supposedly was going to be coming out of marijuana money. That south. Yeah. So hopefully we have not forgot that and we keep that in mind for the future. I agree. I agree, Jeff. For sure. We just need marijuana, yeah, we just money. Need marijuana money. We just need marijuana money. <laughs> Skip, go ahead. There, there is one other way to uh, lower the uh, the cost of OPEB, and that's to sort of cut down on the new hires that we put in. Yep. I'm it, Trevor. <laughs> long, long way around, yeah. I agree. <laughs> Ain't going to happen, though. <laughs> But I also want to earmark solar. You know, we, we, we are starting to have solar projects and when we finally get money coming in, you know, if, if we get it built on the uh, transfer station, you know, I just think these are streams of revenue that we shouldn't um, just roll into the general fund and find a way to squirrel away. I think they really need to go to dedicated expenses down the road. So it's like, you know, you don't miss it if you don't see it right away. Um, I mean, we, there's plenty of places to spend it. We're always going to be hurting, but if we could take, the, you know, money like like the solar or marijuana, if it ever comes, um, and dedicate it towards, towards those expenses or others. You know, obviously, Jeff has a great point about the marijuana, uh, the uh, resource officer. That, mm -hmm. That's an excellent way to, to fund that as well. And as we talked about earlier, the, the county retirement assessment being fully funded, you know, would give us an opportunity in the budget to, to really work in maybe a more aggressive um, saving. Any idea when that might be? I mean, I know it's a ways off, but... I mean, we're we're in, what, 21, 22, and I think yeah. it's like 33 or something Oh, like okay. That. So it's not that um, far away. I haven't looked at it recently, yeah. but... Okay. So in the OPEB report that we got when they did the review of it, the auditors, um, one of their recommendations was to um, push people on to Medicare who aren't, who are Medicare eligible, but aren't on Medicare. Um, um, who does that? Is that well, something? Um, I think, 
I think what you might be talking about is everybody who's eligible for Medicare is on Medicare. They're required to go on Medicare at 65 if they're eligible. You're right. But it was buying there, in. There are, number, there are some employees who um, are not eligible for Medicare. And there's a, a, a way, there's not that many, but there is a way to right. go about paying back or a penalty or something and getting them um, to be eligible. But I, I don't know if that expense would, um, you know, net out. Most, most of our employees are Medicare. Um, they would have had to have been hired before, like, what is it, 86 or something or so. Yeah, they would have had to have been hired either on or before 86, and they would have had to have elected not to join Medicare. And having never paid into Social Security ever. I believe so. I think there's only less than a handful that I that I can think of. Really, only three I can think of. So, I have the number in the report. I, mm -hmm. I haven't looked at it recently. All right, that's a lot of discussion for something we're not even discussing. But. Right. <laughs> we should talk about. Yeah. Sure. Um, Thank you. Oh, Kevin's here. Beautiful. Yep. All right. So okay, thank you. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. Good yeah, job. We're not going to vote the OPEB then? Not tonight. I don't think. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> we didn't have it on our schedule. All right. Brenda, what you got? Um, do oh, we want to um, do this? We'll start in tab one with uh, the town office building maintenance account. And that's uh, account number 192-5400. And the total of that one is budgeted for 81,100. I'll move. Second. All right, we have it moved and seconded for town building maintenance. Any discussion? I have um, one question. Go ahead, John. We only through January we only spent thirty two thousand. Are we being too conservative with the budget amount? All right, um, you're going to have to get a little bit more specific than that. John, hmm? I'm I'm trying to figure out what where what are you where are you looking at here? Well, he's looking I, at I, expenditures, Kevin. And so, and so are you just looking at the expended amount, the thirty-seven thousand? Yeah, and it's it's so hard to um, judge a budget based on what you spend at a certain time. Yeah, I I can't. That doesn't work in for any of the budgets that I deal with because. <clears throat> just it's the nature of the beast. There's going to be times where I may spend a lot of money as soon as July 1st comes, and there may be other times that it gets spent later on. Um, but the bottom line is, is that's it's these are pretty much the solid numbers. I mean, I'm going up $700. Um, I think I'm pretty close to where I need to be. Um, like I said, there's only three three items I went up on, and I think I'm pretty close to being where I need to be. Can I have that budget number again, please? 192-5400. Thank you. You're welcome. So the EMS building maintenance down there, does that come out of the EMS building reserve, whatever we're calling that? No, that's money that we get for uh, their lease payments that we hold back for purposes of doing the maintenance there. It's, it comes from our rental income and it's a percentage of our rental income. In a roundabout way, yeah, it, co it comes from the rent, loops it back around to this. It's so, it's so that Kevin has access to it. Got it. The rest of it is in a reserve fund. Trevor, you have a question? I do. Um, so I worry a, a little bit that, that the budget's a little light. I know we don't have money or so 
just looking at this building, and, and Kevin and I have talked about this a bit, you know, we need to do something with the windows on the front. They really need to be painted um, or replaced because it's so hot on that side of the building and so cold on the north side. I know that's a larger capital project, but I was thinking painting in the meantime. And also, the um, and, and maybe we have a plan to spend this in other areas, but it, it does fall under this budget is to fix the ramps and steps in the back um, leading into the um, counting or the, the, you know, the, the west end of the building. Along with that wall, the T-111 is rotting off. Um, I know that was a temporary extension where assessing is now, but it served its purpose and really it's, it's in bad shape. So I just want to make sure that we do have enough money to tackle those projects next year. They're not huge, so it's not like a massive capital expenditure, but um, you know, we, we just really haven't, you know, we, we just haven't done it. So we need to either put it into a capital request or out of this budget, get that stuff going. Cause those steps are, are really in a bad shape, you know, not safe. So I just wanted to just a question, please, or comment. I was just wondering with the town building maintenance, do we, have we more or less within our own scope here assess some of the smaller projects that we could do and and actually put into this town building maintenance so we had enough money to do these like the back stairs you know there's there's some things that we could probably do and it would be nice if we had a list of those items that we know yep. we should be doing. and then obviously the the items that are going to hit you know, the ten thousand dollar mark or above, then I right. to go to the capital plan. Right, exactly. Just wonder, yep. we, Kevin? just wonder if we could generate a list of of things that need to be done. And Kevin has That's a, a good idea. Kevin, go ahead. Okay, so the the paint was not part of my my thought process right off the bat, but the rear uh, ramp. The steps and the T111 siding. I have already cut a deal with Deerfield Academy. Basically, I'm paying for materials, and hopefully that should oh, be nice. for. So, right now I've got oh, uh, about $6,500 right now in my miscellaneous repair fund, which should be able to fund that. I'm also trying to take care of some carpeting over at the uh, um, police station because um, some of their carpeting over there is, is pretty old. And it's, yeah. it's it's been it's 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 had its useful life is probably the easiest way of saying it. Sure. Um, you know, and and Johnny, I know he's already got we've already got a quote on it. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. Um, but I might even be able to sneak that in for for this one here too. You know, realistically, you know, I obviously I'm only on up you know seven hundred dollars. You know, I have just not even a one percent raise. Um, right. You know, I'm looking at I'm I'm trying to stay as as, as frugal as I can. Um. You know, I, I think I can sneak by with what we got. There's, you know, there's there's always going to be things that up and come. And as Skip has always told me in the past, fortunately I haven't asked for one. But worst case scenario is if I run into something, I run into a big problem, I can ask for a transfer yeah. if need be. So this way I'm not trying to tax the system more by my budget. You know, and then that way but when when I do need money, I can ask for it. And if it's available, it's available. And if it isn't, then, then we we punt. We do something Wait. different. I mean, we that's what we do all the time, daily basis. Well, that's that's wonderful about TA. So yeah, I'll, I'll just, but I will work for, on a list. You know, so that's awesome. Good, John Pachurik, you have a question. Yes, I do. Okay. I noticed back in 2016 we had a transfer from the Peg Access Fund. The question <laughs> is, why can't we take money from the Peg Access account? Because that money comes in dedicated to the uh, cable TV, and because of that, it uses a lot of electricity. There's, I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't back charge something on that. How much? I don't know, but I think that's something I'd like to have you, somebody explain to me why we can or why we can't. Can I speak to that? Please. Go ahead, Brenda. We don't have a PEG access fund that was uh, disbanded in at the end of 2016. So all of our PEG access 
revenues come into the general fund and all of our expenditures go out of the general fund. So there's there's no transfer to do. <coughs> it's not possible. Right. Any further questions? Go ahead, John Preski. Maybe we should charge uh, them an administrative fee for the fixed overhead that I think John is going down a good road here. Uh, we're probably incurring costs that we're not, they're, we're not charging to them. Any thoughts? Like we, like we charge SCEMS uh, an administrative fee for the things we do. Maybe we should charge uh, Peg that. Just we a thought. charge them, it won't do any good because it's still coming out of our free cash. I, I don't know how that works, John. Um, I do know that we have a contract with Comcast um, to, to uh, bring in the money quarterly. Oh, and it's a contract. I, I don't know how many years that covers, five, six, 10 years. Uh, maybe Casey knows, but, or Carolyn or, or Trevor. But um, uh, we <laughs> pay FCAT $80,000 a year to do what they do so i i don't see how we could bring more money in from them when we're paying them to do the work okay right i would draw my discussion <laughs> <laughs> any further questions or discussion Move the question and any waving hands. Um, Jeff Upton. Aye. John Presky. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. John Paterk. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. Harry 700. What's next? All right. Well, let's go to tab four. And we'll start with the general highway payroll, and that's 422-5110. And the total of that is $534,969. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? I have a question. As far as the highway payroll is, uh, is somebody getting a stipend for building maintenance to oversee building maintenance? No, they are not. That is that no. falls under that falls under any Chuck Willer. He is the maintenance foreman. Okay, so he's getting no additional pay. No, he's a foreman now. That's where his pay comes in. Okay. Because he's he's a he's a grade three instead of a grade two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Sure. No, no problem. This is all just straight step increases. No cola like we did the other. That's correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and there's actually three here, myself and two others, that there is no step. So mm -hmm. if uh, they do come out, it's it's only a few that you're you're dealing with and not the entire group. Seven of us. Okay. I do have a question. You've got an administrative assistant line item with uh, is that position filled currently or uh... that position has been offered the start date is sometime the end of or no i'm sorry the middle next week mm -hmm. okay i'm sorry yeah next next week she's starting with brenda for for training um and then she'll end up moving over to the highway in about three weeks because she has to wait for her final sh uh covid shot um and then she will wait her two weeks after that and then she'll start coming in you're telling and me you get a COVID shot and you can work for the town, huh? I'm sorry, Go two ahead, people Jeff. were talking at the same time. Go ahead, Jeff. I was just going to ask, and basically her responsibilities will be what? 
Uh, basically, it's going to be um, trying to take care of my my chapter ninety. Uh, I'm going to be dealing with our with our uh, our software system for payroll for our uh, expenses. Uh, presently, right now, uh, Pat takes care of my bills. Um, so this person is going to be be dealing with the uh, the invoices that come in. Um, plus, they'll also be working on our. Uh, our Cartograph system, which is part of our uh, uh, work order system. She won't be answering the phones. Any other questions or discussion? I don't see anybody. Jeff Upton. Uh, I Don Pareski. Hi. Jim Cambius. Hi. The Calvin. I. John Paturic. Hi. Kip Olmstead. Hi. Allison Vandervelde. Hi. At Carrie seven zero zero. Next. Okay, next one is the general highway expense, uh, very next page, and that's 422-5400 for 260000 dollars excuse me, $260,050. I'm old. Second. Any discussion? Jim Cambius. Uh, I am curious what equipment is being rented? Sorry, uh, I had to unmute myself. Um, line item for equipment rental, and it seems like there were several years where nothing was. So. Yeah, um, that's because we've, we've been trying to, to move towards a, uh, um, a mini. Um, one of the things that we were trying to do, and, and Jeff actually asked the question, he asked me uh, during the capital, the last 10 months, if I used uh, a mini for, re or rented a mini yet? And the answer was no, um, but I didn't really think about giving him the rest of the answer, is I'm basically waiting on my NOI from DEP. And as soon as I get my NOI from DEP, then realistically, I can keep that many in a dump truck, two guys busy for probably five years. Um, but I have to get my NOI from DEP first because otherwise, if I start cleaning any ditches, then I, without that, it's, it's not gonna be pretty for the town. And that's my job is to make sure you guys don't get in trouble. Um, also utilizing it for, uh, um, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but we've been using that blue lift. We've been doing a lot of tree work. Um, part of that's gonna be coming out of the equipment rental because my tree money is depleting extremely quickly. Um, by the time I'm looking at another three weeks, I'll be lucky if I've got a thousand dollars left in tree. Kevin, can I just clarify um, the, the equipment that you're renting for that rental item? You also have capital requests in for, for purchase of, of equipment that would do those jobs. That would be correct. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. Not, not the lift, the lift, the lift. I do not, Okay. have in for uh, I don't use a lift enough to make it worth it um but the other one would definitely make it worth it thank you Robert you have a question or a um, I just had a question on on uh, gas and and diesel do you, you know I noticed it's down a little bit I know it's you know it's creeping up and I wondered if you're going to be okay on that do you feel confident i mean it's, it's really gone up quite a bit in the last couple of months um, you know with with the with the you know with the economy picking up summer here i just see the the you know it's been good for a couple of years right but i i kind of see it going up and i just i just want to make sure that you're good i think you've got I mean, it's not a lot that you're off, but I just want to make sure that you're going to be covered. I mean, again, you can always do a transfer. Um, just those are right, the only yeah. things I saw. I dropped a total of 5000 out of those two because I was looking at some of the other areas where I needed to bring some money up. 
I was looking at what yep. I've been using for gas. Um, yep. And uh, just my gallons, I'm trying to, you know, with the, with the newer programs we have in there, now we're able to actually yep. track things a lot better. So it's, it's easier to, yep. to, it's easier to get the information to be able to make a, a uh, educated decision. Um, I, yep. I think yep. I think I'm going to be okay to be honest with you with, with my fuel. Yep. Um, I appreciate okay. your concern, and and yep. like you said, what it really boils down to is, is if I get in a jam, um, you know, I can um, I can ask for more. Yeah, from, from somewhere Absolutely. else. Absolutely. And the other and, item was tree work because we have we have an immense amount of um, <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of trees to deal with, and I mean just constant you know we need to plant some that we've taken out we need to you know there's a lot of maintenance that needs to go on uh, around with trees lately uh, i know that we talked about clearing on steel water you know kind of up above steel water clearing that out to get hopefully get a little more light on that road because it's deteriorating the road quite a bit um i don't know if that's a capital thing or if, you that know right just, there would be about six thousand all by itself yeah, it is. It is. It burns up. It, it burns up a it lot of money quick. doing tree work. It does. So, I know we've, we've, we've been very fortunate because we've been using Jim's tree service and they treat us extremely well. Um, yep. You know, because we're getting day rates um, and there's a lot of places where we're getting a full day where, um, and you know, they're able to take down three, maybe four trees a day, again, depending on the size, where it would yep. be half the cost of if you or I had it taken down one tree. Right. So, so yeah, they, they've yeah, been absolutely. extremely good to us. Very happy. I just, uh, I know that it's a big concern of residents and they're asking for a lot of tree work going on. And I just want to make people aware, like we're trying to keep budgets tight and that's, you know, this is the trade-off. Like we, we, at 30, $32,000 is a lot of money, but it, it burns up quick. You can't get to everybody's needs in one year. No. And, no. and they just keep, keep going on and on. So that's all. Just to make if the I, comments. If I was really to try and get everybody's easy. needs and, and not exaggerating too bad, maybe a little bit, but if I if I had to go out and and do everything that everybody asked for, I'm going to say probably four to five hundred thousand. Easy. It's a lot. And and, and I think that's on that's on the shy side. Um, you know, very mm -hmm. similar to to like uh, paving. You know, um, I get no money from the town for paving. Anything that we do for paving right. is strictly Chapter 90. Yep. Hey, John Presky, you had a question? There's a lot of tree work that's been done where the, the not the, where the, the lumber or the tree is still, it's been cut down, it's on the side of the road. Is, that's probably Eversource's project, am I correct with that? A lot of that is Eversource, that is correct. Um, some of the things, what we do is when we take a tree down, whether we take it down or we, or we have gyms take it down, we always give the homeowner um, first try to find out whether they want it. If they don't want it, then usually there's a neighbor. Um, to be honest with you, normally, there's a lot of people chasing the tree guys. Um, right. You know, cool. and, and pick it up the wood. Um, for those that, that don't want the wood, um, prime example was, was a, a, a woman called last week on like Wednesday and said that, you know, there was an area where, you know, it, it was in her way to try and get to, um, her backyard. So fortunately, Casey got in touch with me. I got in touch with Eversource. Eversource did what they needed to do. And by Friday, the problem was gone. Um, so they were able to come by and grab that wood. Normally what they'd like to do, cause I've been talking with the guys, the tree guys, is they want to make sure that they make it worth their time so that way they can go out with a log truck and fill a truck um so that right. way when because you know, running equipment's expensive so um yeah that's what they try and do they try and make the best bang for the buck i guess it's probably the easiest way of saying it thank you any other questions or discussion on this item all right we'll call the vote jeff upton Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. Jack Patrick. Aye. Pip Olmstead. Aye. Ali Vandervelden. Aye. That carries 700. Next. 
The next one is the next page. Uh, that's snow and ice removal. 423-5400 for $90,000. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded for winter snow and ice removal. Any comments? Go ahead, Skip. Uh, this is this is simply uh, an annual number that we put in there, and uh, we don't know what that snow and ice cost is actually going to be. Uh, but this is just a good guess, and it's worked for us, so more than happy to leave it as is. Yeah, this is this is one of the ones that you don't want to go up on. Because if you go up on, you can't go backwards for, right. I believe it's like five years. Okay. Five years. Actually, I, I'm not actually sure. Actually, the other way around, Kevin, you can't go down. No, that's what I'm saying is after you go up, you can't come back down for like three right. to five years. Okay. I, I think I, I could be wrong on the, on the, on the time frame. But. Is that the state that says that? DOR? Yeah. That would be correct. Great. Any further discussion? Oh. Don't see any. Jeff Upton. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. Jack Pachurk. Aye. Skip Olmsted. Aye. Allie Vandervelden. Aye. That carries 700. Next. Next page, it's street lighting 424-5400 for $37,000. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? Nope. I have I have a question with with the street lighting. Now, uh, wasn't the energy group talking about maybe doing something as far as funding here? They were actually talking about going in and getting a grant to change things over to LED. My understanding is that they've secured part of the grants. They're in the process of going through right now to look at what there is for inventory to make sure that that matches whatever source has. Because uh, I guess because that was one of the questions I asked was, you know, why are we why are we taking the time and spending the money? Because they said. Anytime that we've ever done this, whatever Eversource says and whatever we come up with is never the same number. So, yeah. so they are in the process of taking care of that. Now, will the street lights in the future come down? Um, I'm quite sure they will. Uh, when those new ones are going up, I'm not holding my breath. Um, right. Presently, right now, I'm looking at, and usually this is one of the ones you can kind of look at and, and say, okay, well, you know, you're, you're, you're seven months through the year, you're eight months through the year, because it's fairly consistent for street lighting. That's probably the only one that I can really count on being consistent. Um, 37,000, uh, right now I've already expended just over, uh, just over 24,000. I've got about 13,000 left. Um, so I think I'm sitting in, in decent shape. If we don't go up and if we continue using our standard lights, which I believe we will through at least half of the year next, um, th then we should be in good shape. And if we are, then then either we can utilize part of that money because street lighting, you know, and, and maybe I'm cutting a hair here, but, you know, if we look at say, okay, well, you know, well, we're, we're like $7,000 short of being able to what we need to do to, to finish this project to turn everything all over to LED we could, as far as I would look at it, and obviously Brenda would have to be giving me the final okay, um, but I'd be looking at, well, street lighting. Well, you you have expended money for street lighting, and if we need to spend a little bit money to get us over the LEDs, which will eventually save us in the long run, I think that'd be the direction I would head in. Sounds good. Thank you, Kevin. Yep. Well, out of curiosity, how much of this 37,000 is, um, Electricity versus replacement and repair. That's all um, usage. It's all electricity. That's all usage because we basically what we do is is we own what's up there. Or excuse me, they own what's up there. So we pay the the usage fee. Um, that's why it's so expensive 
to change over to LED because the town has to buy all of the lights that are existing on the poles now before they will allow it to go to LED. And last I knew it was like $70,000 we're gonna have to pay to pay off the street lights that we're gonna rip down and throw out. Kevin, is your budget taking into account the maintenance on the LED? Um, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't even looked at the LED. I know, I know nothing of it. Um, like I said, presently right now, I'm, I'm looking at sticking with the existing lighting um, because you know as well as I do how fast things move, or I should say how slow things move. Um, you know, I think we would be very lucky if we were talking this time next year that the LEDs were actually up and going personal opinion. I, I could be completely wrong and you know, all of a sudden everything falls together and July 31st we're all switched over but once again well, I wouldn't hold my breath. And I think too that if you did go to LED your um, electricity costs are obviously going to be a lot less so that might wash uh, in the end. <laughs> Dramatically. You can have to Any excuse further? me for a minute. I gotta, I gotta step away for a minute. Any, any quick questions before I step away? I'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll call vote. Jeff Upton. Aye. Don Presky. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. Jack Pachurk. Aye. Skip on. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. That carries seven zero zero. Um, Brenda, do we want to take up the transfers while we're waiting for Kevin to come back? Yeah, we could do that. The transfer station expense is the next page, and that's four three three dash fifty four hundred for two hundred and eleven thousand no. six hundred dollars. No, I meant the um, transfers from the reserve fund to cover. Oh, got it. Yeah. Um, what did I do? Exposition of words. Huh? So we do have two transfer requests for two overdrawn accounts. Um, Julie, do you want to just should we just start with the uh, general fund or the general insurance? Okay. I sent all of you an email with uh, uh, those attached to the email in case you want to see them. But our general insurance account is overdrawn by $2,308. And I think a lot of that is when we budgeted, we weren't anticipating. anticipating. Uh, oh, there you go. Uh, we weren't anticipating a 23.5% increase in our injured on duty insurance. <laughs> um, so, uh, I just rounded up to three thousand for the for the transfer. Make a motion we approve this transfer. I'll second it. Any discussion? Oh, if I'm sharing, I can't see everybody. I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. Stop. Julie. Any discussion? Yeah, I've got a question. Uh, I'm just, my question is, it's almost like it's a little bit early to be doing some of these transfers. Are we sure we're not going to need to make additional transfers to this account? I don't believe that we will need another transfer to this account okay. uh, based on the history, but um, I thought better to take care of it now than to wait uh, for this because it's been this way since August. So. Okay. Any further discussion? No. All right. Uh, we'll call vote. Jeff Upton. Uh, aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julia Chalfin. Aye. Jack Paturk. Aye. Skip Olmsted. Aye. Allie Vanderbilt. Aye. 
All right, that carries seven zero zero. Okay. Uh, the next uh, transfer request is for uh, the ZBA account. Um, you know, this one fluctuates based on the number of mailings that they do in a period of a year. Uh, they have been overdrawn for some time. Their account is a negative three hundred and forty-one dollars and seventy cents. I thought by transferring a thousand, we should cover anything else that they would have for the rest of the year. Make a motion. We approve this. Second. Second. Great. Seeing none. Jeff Upton. Uh, hi. John Presky. Hi. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. John Paterk. Aye. Skip Olmsted. Aye. Ali Vandervelden. Aye. That carries seven zero zero. All right, back to Kevin. Yeah. So, so now we can do the transfer station expense, and that was 433 5400 for $211,000 or $211,600. No more. Second. Second. All right. Uh, Kevin, do you want to give us a quick summary? Um, sure. Uh, trash compactors, I went down a little bit. Recycling went up because uh, recycling is costing us more money. Um, sometimes it's almost cheaper to throw it away than it is to recycle it. Um, hazardous waste has gone up because a lot more people have been uh, bringing in things that we're, we're going to be getting rid of. Um, and then solid waste, which is basically the um, um, Franklin County solid waste, um, they've gone up in their uh, their pricing. Other than that, I've pretty much been flatlined all the way across. Um, things seem to be fairly stable. You know, the restroom people, they've been really good about not really bumping up any of their rates. Um, you know, trash, I looked at how much trash we were doing. You know, uh, you know, I, I kind of drew a little bit off of the year before also, for the simple fact I was a little bit off because of uh, COVID. So I'm not sure if it was people not coming to the transfer station as much, um, but you know that one's kind of hard to read because whether you got COVID or not, you still got trash to get rid of, you know. Um, but I was I was trying to be a little, I was, I was trying to save a little bit of money so that way what I did go up was wasn't very much, um, and I thought I could get away with it there. And again, I'm kind of going back to the thought process of keeping it down low, and if I need a transfer, but just be advised that all of my budgets don't ever think about seeing any free cash coming back from because there's not enough there for free cash. John Presky, you have a question? Yes, I know it's small potatoes, but I'm wondering why payroll hasn't gone up 5% thereabouts. Why what, I'm sorry? Payroll, it's still a 54,000, but won't the people be getting a step increase? I know it's not Mike a lot. Phillips, of Mike Phillips retired. Pardon? Mike um, Phillips I, I, I mean, retired. No, this this one's transferred. I'm going to need, I'm going to need to relook at that one again for a second. Um, it's not a, a big deal, okay? It's not a whole lot of money. I was just curious. No, I'm just looking to see where I'm at right now, what I've got left. Um, yeah, I want to say, because what we did last year is when I put this money in is I put in for the extra overtime at a different person's rate of selling stickers at the transfer station. Mm -hmm. And I ended up bringing somebody else in at $15.25 compared to the $22 an hour that the other person gets. Um, I kind of ran those numbers. And again, I think I'm fairly close to where I need to be. Um, I'm be thin. And like I said, if I run into trouble, I may ask for money, but... Other than that, I, I think I should be okay. Yeah, it's not a lot of money anyway. Thank you. Any further discussion? Nope. 
just to, you know, this can be in another meeting at some point, Kevin, but I was curious if you think the, and we still have to come up with a policy on this, but the take it or leave it will affect your budget at all. Are you expecting maybe volunteers to do that? Are you seeing any? You know, well, to be honest with you, and, and, and I'll try to make this as, as quick and painless as possible. Yeah. Um, my recommendation would be have somebody else come in and run it. The simple fact is, is, is if, if, if whatever, because I know other people said, well, other towns, you know, their, their transfer station people run it. Well, here's the way, this is my thought process is, is if our guys are going to be doing it, then they're not going to get into an argument with anybody. It's going to be people right. that are going to go ahead and drop stuff that we know full well is junk. But if yeah. our guys say something, it's going to turn into an ugly mess. Yeah. And basically, I my a part of it is, is what we'll do is we will go ahead and we'll estimate the weights of things that we're throwing out. Right. And we'll go ahead and say, just so you're aware, you know, and obviously, you know, I'm going to have to go a year to be able to have an idea. But this way I can go after yeah. it afterwards and say, just so you're aware, this take it or leave it cost the users of the transfer station because that's who we're trying to get to pay right and not the entire yep. town well that right. take it or leave it just cost you seven thousand dollars this year so right exactly now I have we to need increase to really my 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 bulky item by seven thousand yep. dollars if you want to keep your keep your take it or leave it exactly now, i just if you I want utilize to be somebody aware. else a volunteer to go in and kind of keep an eye on it you know, I, I know, you know, and again, I'm not a social media person and Trevor knows, I told you, kick me off of face, kick me off of Deerfield now. <laughs> um, but now and then my wife goes ahead and reads the stuff and it, it just, my blood pressure goes out of sight. <laughs> is, um, it's, there's a lot of people that think we really need to do this and I agree with them. I think it's good so long as it's managed properly. If not, then it's going to cost yeah. the people, it's going to cost the users money. So, you know, unfortunately, it's like anything else that we do in town, you know, we need to think about what our, what our priorities are. And, and if we want yeah. to do this, and if it's going to cost us money, do you have the stomach to pay for it? Well, that's the key. That's really the key. I think it's good to reuse stuff and, get, and not put it in the waste stream. And if people can take it home, that saves in the long run. But I, I agree. I, I wonder, you know, that's why I asked, do you think, you know, we no, may I, take a I'd year to come like back to, and look at that. Let's move on and vote on this. Um, any other discussion pertinent to the pricing here that we have for next year? No, Amy, no. Let's go ahead and vote this. Jeff Upton? Aye. Don Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Billy Chalfant. Aye. John Paterk. Aye. Kip Olmstead. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. All right, that's Carrie 700. Who do we have next, Brenda? The next one is Test Well Monitoring, which is the next page. And that's 39 5400 for $40,000. So moved. Second. All right. Test well monitoring has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? John Presky. Who does the monitoring? Do we subcontract it out or is it? Yeah, no, we, we definitely subcontract that out because it's uh, basically when, when they're all said and done, you get a, a booklet that's about three and a half inches thick of documentation, of readings, of anything, whether it's the, 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 um, the test wells, whether it's the gas, um, where are they at, you know, plus they have to go over and sample the water over by uh, Melnix. They have to check Melnix wells. Um, then there's seeping areas that they have to check. So yeah, we, we, we put that out on um, and I'm sorry, but as soon as you just asked me, the, the name of the company just went right out of my head. I, I cannot That's remember okay. the name of it. You answer my question. Austin on, oh, no. Any other questions? Nope. Does it look like it? Jeff Upton. Uh, aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. John Pachert. Aye. Kip Olmstead. Aye. Allison Vandervelde. 
Aye. That carries seven zero zero. All right, so um, we have the wastewater treatment plant left, and I know we don't have a lot of time, but I think we could at least start on it. I'm not sure how far we can get, but if you go to your tab nine, um, there's a you have your um, summary sheet. Um, we can we can look at the summary sheet first if you want. It just says wastewater treatment plant or sewer enterprise. Everybody have that up? So um, just, just so you know, I did go over this budget with uh, James Rivers from DPC Engineering. And we looked at what they were expecting for revenues for next year. We reduced that down a little bit based on the fact that maybe the schools might not be completely running uh, in person. And um, we figured based on that, we could still pay off the entire clarifier and still only take $200,000 out of retained earnings for that and have a balanced budget. So, um, so with that said, um, I guess we could go to the individual seats if you want. We could look at the payroll first. What do you think, Kevin? I'm, I'm okay. sorry, I, I missed completely what you just said. I, I, I was I was looking at something else. I'm sorry. I was trying to get ahead of the game and looking at my next budget. <laughs> Um, I think if we looked at the sewer payroll to start with, I think um, you know there isn't there isn't a lot here that's different. Um, we have the step increases for those that were eligible for step increases. Uh, the county retirement is an allocation that you saw in Barb's budget that that doesn't change. Um, Medicare insurance is, was also figured by Barb. The life insurance is a pretty set figure. So all of those figures in this particular budget are really set unless there's a COLA um, voted. We have a motion. I'll move. So what is it that we're actually voting on here? Sewer payroll. payroll. Say it again. The sewer payroll. Okay. At 303,211. So I think I heard a move, but not a second, right? Second. We have a second. Okay, so it is moved and seconded for the sewer payroll at 303,211. Discussion. Quick question, overtime, could that be explained to me, please? Sorry, you're asking about the overtime? Yeah. Uh, overtime basically covers uh, weekends and holidays. That that, that plant's okay, going to be manned so seven days a week, 365 days a year. Right, so basically just talking weekends and holidays is what's considered overtime yeah unless they you know because they you know there may also be some overtime where they may end up running the trouble down there um you know yeah I've, I've, there's, there's been plenty of times where they've had to stay late because of issues at the plant you know and unfortunately that that's a <laughs> that's a weekly weekly thing right now at the plant yeah Any other discussion or questions? No. Uh, roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Aye. John Foresky. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. John Paturk. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Ali Vandervelde. Aye. All right. That carries seven zero zero. Um, I know we're getting close to uh, needing to be off for the assessors meeting, but 
Um, do we want to look at sewer expense for a couple minutes? Yes, yeah, let's do it. Okay. So that's the very next page, and that total is seven hundred and fifty-three thousand sixty-five dollars. I move. Second. All right. Just summarize what the increase is. Oh, it's sludge disposal. Sludge uh, and, uh, and administrative costs went up quite a bit because their budget has increased quite a bit. I'm, I'm basically looking at um, where I'd gone up was uh, equipment rentals. I went up uh, $2,000 there. Um, tools and supplies, um, went up $3,500 there, $500 in licensing. Um, printing, I went up another $500. Um, it was a $2,000. Uh, I'm sorry, I went down $500. The, let's see what's the next one. Billing software system that went up four hundred dollars. Sludge that was the big one, thirty thousand. Um, I and I uh, another ten thousand um, went up. Um, they call it telephone pagers internet. Um, it's just basically our, our services that we have down there. The prices have gone up. Um, admin supplies, you know, supplies going up. Other expenses went up by a thousand. Um, audit went up by $125, and then the administrative indirect expense was $16,520, which gave me a total of $64,045, which is a 9.30 increase, which is, is harsh. Um, you know, I, I completely understand because I am a um, sewer user myself, so I feel this directly. Um, and I'm not trying to make this any easier, but last year was almost 22%. So we're half of what it was last year. Um, but unfortunately, I mean, it's it's the plant. Um, there's not much you can do about it. Um, unless you can configure a way of making it go away in your own house. Other than that, um, our hands are kind of tied with, with where we're at. Um, hopefully, you know, once we get past all of the upgrades, we'll be in a better shape and then we'll be able to go ahead and, and some of these costs can go down. But like repairs and rentals right now are absolutely killing us. Um, repairs so far, equipment repair so far, I spent over 35000 Um Sewer line maintenance is getting right up there. Um, it's in the sewer lines, to be honest with you, because we're getting the CB, CCTV being done, we're recognizing how much more we're having issues within the town as far as sewer lines are concerned. Um, we've got, I know some areas where we're going to have to replace. Replacement cost is about 280, excuse me, $265 a foot um, compared to lining, which is about $135 a foot. Obviously, we'll line where we can, but you know, if if we if if the if it's junk enough that we can't do anything with it, and we can't line it, then we have to replace it. The I, the I and I is, is absolutely killing us. I think the repair, Question, work, the repair work is what's really awful. I mean, Captain Lathrop Drive. What was that, Kevin? Last week was twenty thousand for repair. That 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 had the capability of actually going up to almost forty thousand, um, because it was somebody decided to go ahead and flush the underwear, and actually I still have the underwear, so if we want to go ahead and show it around, find out maybe whose it is, uh, but we definitely know it's somebody on Captain Lathrop, um, and uh, the problem is is the system that we have now, they were having problems with the pumps, Bosch bought the pumps recognize what the problem was is there wasn't quite enough horsepower to it change the horsepower so now if we need to replace a pump if i can't get my hands on a replacement existing which i'll be honest with you so far right now i've been spending three months trying to find a replacement spare pump if not then when the pumps get replaced the drivers have to get replaced with them also so you're, you're going to be looking at possibly another fifty thousand dollar cost 
Justin Lathrop. Just a general question, if I may, and this is probably more towards the select board, but with uh, with the state supposedly in the federal monies coming into the state, is there any way, shape, or form that there's grants out there or money that we can get our hands on to help us out here? And it's not just the sewer, but the schools also? The stimulus package is going to be for COVID related kind of stuff, Jeff. There's less strings attached. It's really exciting. It's going to be well over a million dollars, we estimate. So um, we're going to get lots of help for things. But um, the infrastructure plan that the feds are working on is, is, very, um, is very early stages. We don't know what we can do yet, but we're hoping to transfer some of this eventually to a stimulus, you know, to an infrastructure pro project. But that hasn't right. even started the, through the feds process yet. Folks, can I interrupt? I'm sorry, the assessors are starting in five minutes. Okay. So we need to get hop off so they can hop on. We will. Um, does anybody have further questions for Kevin on this item? Why don't we pick this up where we left off? at our next meeting so the question okay. is when when is our next meeting two weeks from tonight okay but we we do have a motion on the table are we retracting that motion or are we voting it does anybody have any further discussion on this item i'm ready to vote it i am as well anybody else have further discussion on this item well, why don't we just vote it then yeah let's vote it jeff upton Abstain. Don Pareski. Uh, aye. Kim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Paturk. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. So that's 601 passes. Um, our next meeting is two weeks from tonight. So. March, March, I think it's the 30th at 5, 5 p.m. Um, and I think with that, 5, 5 o'clock, not 5.30. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to, to for the select board to adjourn. Is there any is second, there a second? Carolyn? Yeah, I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I, Chairman I, McDaniel. Carolyn I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfley. The Senior Housing Committee Thanks, meeting is at 7 if anyone wants to come. It's Make uh, a motion to adjourn. Adjourn Finance Committee. Thank you. Second. Second. All right, Jeff Upton. Aye. Don Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Paturk. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Ali Vandervelden. Hi. We are out of there with two minutes to spare. Excellent. Thank, Thank you all you. very much. Yeah, appreciate it.